The best way to use your words to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to read his words about himself. And that's why the Quran, the frequently recited book, is the best form of dhikr. It is the best form of remembrance. SubhanAllah, if you look at all of the other athkar that we have covered, and they are all beautiful, you will find that they are multiplied in the context of the Quran. Meaning, if you go through the Quran, you will read these athkar naturally. And all of the blessings of these afkar will become so much more because you'll have the reward of the dhikr themselves as well as the recitation of the Qur'an. You'll understand the context, when the prophets were saying it, when we should say it as believers. Allahumma ja'alil Qur'an rabi'a qulubina. And you'll see that with all of the afkar, when they are recited in isolation, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned rewards for the entirety of that particular statement of dhikr. But with the Qur'an, the Prophet ﷺ said that every letter of the Qur'an is worth 10 hasanat. And he said, and I'm not saying that alif lam mim, for example, is 10 hasanat. I'm saying alif is 10, lam is 10, mim is 10. And so alif lam mim in and of itself is 30 hasanat. There is no other dhikr that you will find that is mentioned like this to where even the letter becomes rewardable like the Qur'an. When you think about the status of a person, all of the athkar that elevate a person, the Prophet ﷺ said that the one who recites the Qur'an with proficiency is ma'al kiram al-barara, with the most noble of the angels. You know, you're talking about the athkar and you're wanting to be remembered by those noble angels. The one who recites it proficiently is with the most noble of the angels. And the one who recites it and struggles has double the reward. When you think about the athkar being witnessed by the angels and the angels recording the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says about the Qur'an that in the Qur'an al-Fajr kana mashhuda, that the Qur'an of Fajr is witnessed by the angels. As Imam ibn Salah rahimahullah said, that the angels have been given the gift of listening to the Qur'an but you have been given the gift of reciting the Qur'an. And so there is nothing that the angels love more than to hear you recite the Qur'an and they descend upon you to hear it the way they gathered around Jibreel alayhi salam as he brought it down to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And so you cannot imagine the amount of angels that descend upon you when you sit to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting his words in the very famous hadith of Al-Bara radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he mentioned a man who was reciting Surah Al-Kahf. And as he was reciting Surah Al-Kahf, the horses started to move in a way that it was as if they were going to break free. And when they told the Prophet Sallallahu about that incident, he said that the angels were descending upon you, that you saw the lights filling the skies and the angels descending upon you, so much so that even the horses were moved by it. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, that was a sakina, that was tranquility that descended upon you. And Imam ibn Hajar rahimahullah, he said that a sakina here refers to the angels themselves because wherever the angels go, sakina, tranquility, descends as well. And there's nothing that causes the angels to descend upon you like the recitation of the Qur'an. And so when you want tranquility around you, you recite the Qur'an. When you want tranquility in your heart, you recite the Qur'an. And when Allah Azza wa Jalla says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ That verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find satisfaction? Nothing is going to bring that satisfaction to the heart like the Qur'an, the best of all dhikr, the best of all remembrance. And subhanAllah, we find in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said the opposite also, that a person who doesn't have any of the Qur'an in their heart is like al-bayt al-kharib, is like a destroyed home. They're completely in shambles when they don't have the Qur'an in their hearts and committed to their recitation and are committed to it in their practice. As for your status, Rasulullah said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضَعُ بِهِ آخَرِينَ That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors people with this book and He humiliates others. What does that exactly look like? In this life, the Prophet said, that you should only envy two people, that there is no hasad, no envy, except in the case of two. A person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wealth to, and he spends it for the sake of Allah, and a person who has the Qur'an committed to memory, 
and he recites it day and night. And of course, this type of envy is a healthy envy, not one where you want bad for the person, but where you wish to be like that person and spending and reciting of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with for his sake. That's in this dunya. On the day of judgment, there is no other dhikr like the Qur'an, for the Qur'an comes forth as an intercessor on your behalf, arguing on your behalf in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, form a canopy over you of birds and clouds, shading you and crowning you on the day of judgment. And so on the day of judgment, nothing elevates you like the Qur'an. And finally, in Jannah, when you talk about trees and treasures, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it will be said to the person, read and recite up until the last verse that you have committed to memory. And so when you talk about elevation, how many ayat, how many letters are there in the Qur'an? Memorize as much as you can, recite as much as you can, and that is the ability that you have to reach the highest rank in Jannah bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And subhanAllah, it is a healing for us in every single way. Shifa'un nima fis sudur. A healing for that which is in our hearts. And even when it comes to physical healing, there is nothing that heals like Surah Al-Fatiha. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught us to read it over ourselves to heal, and he even allowed us to read it over others to heal them. When it comes to protection, there is nothing like the last three quls of the Qur'an. There is nothing like Ayatul Kursi. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he received the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, they were sufficient for us at night. So the best form of dhikr at night is the recitation of the end of the Qur'an. And is there a restriction to how much you should recite the Qur'an? SubhanAllah, you find it in your salah. You find it after your salah. You find it throughout the day and night. You find it as the rope of Allah. You find it as the trustworthy handhold. You find that the people of the Prophet Sallallahu the greatest generation, were described as Ahlul Qur'an, the people of Qur'an, and they are the most beloved people to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And you find that the companions were up at night, especially in the last third, reciting the book of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and connecting themselves to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And in that process, you know, if you think about the Qur'an, not only are all other forms of dhikr embedded in the Qur'an, but the best thing that you could do with the Qur'an is to pray, is to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to immerse your entire body in a form of dhikr. And this is where you find yourself in the closest position to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When every part of your body is in a state of dhikr and you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His word, what better place could you be in than in that place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And so this Qur'an is your greatest sustenance this is what determines your station in this life and the next. This Qur'an is your salvation. This Qur'an is the way that you cling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Qur'an is the way that you learn about Allah. This Qur'an is how you remember Allah. This Qur'an is how you hope to be resurrected in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inni abduk, ibn abdik, ibn amatik, ناصيتي بيدك ماض في حكمك عدل في قضاءك أسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن ربيع قلبي ونور صدري وجلاء حزني وذهاب همي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض 
من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس